guys, I am hanging out with Sam at the Florida Tortoise and Iguana Breeders, and whoa, look at this guy, what's his name? This is Adolf. Oh man, yeah, he's look a at big this one. dude. He's huge. He's 104 years old, he's and he huge. weighs 570 pounds. He's 104 years old? 104 years old, yeah. Whoa. Yep. Dude, Actually, see, this, is, this is what happens when you eat your veggies, guys. You, you can live to 104 years old. He's going to go veggies. through that. Uh, he's going to go through those greens pretty quick. He's going to go through right to my fingers. Yeah, don't let him do that. So it's pretty neat. If you notice, he's got a beak. He doesn't actually have teeth. He's got a serrated beak, and that beak is really, really sharp. And he can. I've seen them just hack right through a cob of corn and just snap it right, right. You know, the ends right off of it. So something else that you know, but may notice is that there's another tortoise here. Oh man, she's so getting This is young. a female, and then this is a male. You, you see want the, the tremendous second, difference in size. Oh, look at the way she eats. She's cute, right? Are you guys going to do that lady oh, and tramp don't thing? Get, don't let them fight over that piece. They'll bite each other. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I can't feed her. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. So we can go get reloaded here because uh, that didn't work out too good. You know, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't bring enough ammunition. Yeah, we'll get some more food for these guys. He's a living, look at this, he's a living dinosaur, you know. Every day that I come out here and I see these animals from my deck up there, it, it, every day is special. It, it's never gotten old. Just so coming out and seeing a dinosaur in the yard. It, it's never gotten old. It, every day is special. That's kind of so the what, what really got is. you into what got you into raising tortoises, man? God, I've been doing it since I'm like well, six or seven years old, you know. My parents took me to a zoo up in New York. And I, I see one, but I didn't even know if it was real or if it was a, if it was a, a statue or something. But, you know, I always just got really interested in them. So then I started studying and working and, you know, trying to improve my life. So I eventually I could afford an animal and be able to, to buy them and keep them and breed them. So that's what I've done no with fighting. my life. No fighting. I'll give you some over here. Yeah, they go through this pretty quick. We don't normally feed them this because normally this is a, just a grazing animal and we feed them hay and, uh, you know, we feed them some tortoise chow, but this is really just a treat. This is something that's special for them. They really like it. Now, in the wild, the wild populations of these guys, you want to talk about that? Oh, oh, oh. oh don't fall! <laughs> Wild po I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the wild populations, you know, they're really, really decreasing. Well, I know that the Galapagos are in danger. They're in danger, right. So, uh, you know, the Darwin Station there has, has been breeding and putting some animals back in the wild. And what's really neat is they, uh, you know, the whole story about Lonesome George. You know, Lonesome George was the sole survivor of that species of tortoise. It kind of looked a lot like Adolf here. That was the one that didn't have any mates. That's right. And they, they tried for years and years finding and finding mates, and they never could find any of this species. That's why they called them Los and George, because eventually what happened was, yeah, I mean, he was only by himself, he couldn't reproduce. But after he died, they just recently found more of those types of species tortoise. Oh, no! Yeah, he wasn't the last one. He wasn't the last one. Are there the enough to have one. a breeding population now, or what? They, they have a population. I don't know how well the population is breeding. You know, all of those different populations are suffering, you know, because of, uh, you know, what's happened in the island, you know, you have these wild goats and rats and stuff like that has really decimated the, uh, the population. But that's what the, the folks there do at the Darwin Station is they're in the, in the business of making sure that these animals do not um, end up extinct. And, you know, it's part of what, what I'm working on as well, too, is, you know, we call these colonies insurance colonies. And that means that if something happens and they end up being extinct in the wild, there's other colonies of these animals that are that are uh, in zoos or in private collections to help make sure that they they don't all uh, that we don't actually lose them through extinction. And then that's the role that private breeders can play, where that's basically you, you, you're you're an insurance that. policy because the the problem is that in the wild more and more of their habitats are being destroyed, and there are less and less places where us humans aren't encroaching on animals. Yeah, and yeah. so, Plays the same way every, if every you guys can world. breed these guys and, and keep them going and keep the genetic diversity, just in case you might at some point need to stock them back in the wild, they don't disappear. Right, you don't know that there isn't you know, something cataclysmic that, that happens on the Galapagos Island. You could have a, whatever could happen, they could have a giant oil spill or something and kill half of them. 
So, you know, we don't know. There are different things that can happen. So it's better when they're diversified in different places around the world as well. So, you know, they really are a dinosaur. This design is actually uh, 200 million years old. Back about 240 million years ago, they actually were a lizard. They weren't a tortoise. And it was a lizard that did some burrowing, burrowing the ground, and it needed to improve its ability to dig those tunnels. So that's why it started getting, uh, like, uh, it got rid of the tail, it got uh, bigger feet in the back. Then as it, as it spent more time in these holes, their ribs would actually flatten out, and then it started touching, and then it, it started forming a shell, and then you've got a, a layer of keratin over the top, and that, that's what... That's Which what is what their, their uh, what their shells are made out of. Yeah, the same thing. That's like the same thing as our fingernails, guys. Right, or the rhinoceros horn or something like that. And so, you were telling me earlier, there's something really, really interesting, really, really cool about the front of his shell here. Yeah, this is a Vincina. So what Darwin was doing out in the Galapagos is he was looking at these different tortoises. He's looking at these different tortoises. And he noticed and something about this one. He noticed something about the different islands all had a different shape. And he wondered why they, all of the tortoises he believed were related, but why do they have different shape? And they had a different shape because they were adapting to their particular environment. This tortoise, being a Vincina, it gave him a little bit of an advantage over other tortoises because he can reach his head up really You high. can see how high he can reach. He yeah. can even use his foot here yeah, as leverage to try to get up even higher. So that gives him the ability to reach up really high and get food that's high up. So that, that, that's what allowed him to continue to survive. But yeah, if you look at the front of his shell now, how his front of his shell like flares that. up. Yeah, wow. And the reason it flares up is so he can take that big old long neck right, right. there and reach it all the way up and grab the lettuce from you. Or in the wild, if he's trying to grab something that's growing up higher, he can reach that higher, that higher food source. Now look at this one here. This is a different species. This is Negrita. Look how close her shell is to her, or any one of these. Look at this one here. Her shell is already touching. The neck is almost touching yeah, so the shell. Yeah, she so can't, she can't, re can't reach, reach up her, her neck at anything. So nothing. she is is a tortoise that would like to eat her on, on the ground. That's right, she doesn't have any so, so because she's not competing with whatever that was introduced in And, and whatever different different uh, stimuli, you know, trying to adapt to get the food that's there, right. these guys just took a different path. That's right. Yeah, because the food was eaten out from some other animal that was eating that out of the, out of the environment. So they were so competing with another... Another ground-dwelling type of herbivore. So it gave them a little bit of advantage to reach up. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Now, you were telling me there's something uh, special with these guys in terms of how, how they got around? Maybe coming across some water? Yeah, actually, you know, the giant, the giant tortoises are all found on islands. Uh, you don't find giant tortoises on, on, uh, on the continents, the mainland. And what happens is in those mainlands, the smaller tortoises will actually drift out. That's what happened. They drifted over the seas and they landed in these islands. And because they didn't have any competition for, uh, they didn't have a predator, they didn't have competition for food, they were able to grow over millions of years to get so large. That's the reason that you only find giant tortoises on small islands. Now, when they're blowing out to the islands, are they getting on some brush and different stuff that just just, just float? How, the, know, how actually, exactly are they floating out? Yeah, they actually float. You know, there's an interesting story. It goes back a couple of years ago. There was a tortoise in Madagascar. That's off the southeastern coast of Madagascar, off the southeastern coast of Africa. You have that giant tortoise, that giant, Madagas that giant island, Madagascar. And about 1,200 miles off in the Indian Ocean, is where these animals come from, the Aldabras. But anyway, on, one of these tortoises was on Mauritius, and what he did, he got too close and he got swept away in, that, uh, in, in, the, in the ocean. Six months later, he lands on the coast of India. Lands on the coast, just gets up, starts walking, covered in barnacles. He lived six months, no food, no water, bobbing out in the Indian Ocean, and Crazy. Landed. Now, I always think about that. What other animal could live for six months without food or water, not in their natural environment? Uh, I, 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 I don't know of any. I don't, I, I, not, not, they're, they're not a water turtle, so the only thing he can do is, is hold, his, hold his breath and bob. And he could do it for so long, he was able to survive six months. No food, no water, landed, and, and just... You know, go back about business, start about eating, business. And, and, and that's, that's here, you and, know? and that just shows the incredible adaptation of these yeah, guys, yeah. where, I mean, that. they can adjust to their environment where, like, they don't need food all the time, 
they can they can get by and survive for a long time even even in situations where they they don't have any food yeah that's what actually one of the things that drove them to uh, extinction is their tremendous ability to survive without food and water and and uh, and uh, you know, just be, be able, you know, actually to live without food and water. So it's kind of interesting to think that was the reason, one of the reasons that they went almost extinct because what had happened was the pirates and the maritimers and everything would go and collect these animals and they would put them on the ships and as they sailed Because they the could Caribbean, eat them later and they, they didn't have to them feed later. them and give them water or anything and then use their resources. So, they could have this animal on here and hey, when it's time, it's kind of like, you know, it's almost like canned food where, you know, you yep. put it on the shelf and yep. you don't have to do much with it. And yep. it's exactly, they didn't have to worry about fishing. They had a different type of protein. And it was so prevalent that the, the, the whaling, I mean, the, the maritime ships, the pirate ships, they actually had the ships built with holes specifically for the cargo. They built it in so that it, they used it as ballast too. So, you know, they played a vital role in helping man get around the Get around the world but that also okay. almost led to to their, to their extinction, extinction. Their because this ability to survive almost any condition almost drove them to extinction wow that's crazy it's crazy right that's crazy yeah but luckily we luckily still got these here. guys around living the living dinosaurs these guys and as you know alligators they talk about prehistoric animals yep been around for a really long time, really long time. And alligators are like that too, where they can go a long time without eating. They can go six months to a year without eating. Yeah. But don't eat my camera. <laughs> curious. Curious, definitely curious. Well, thank you so much for showing us these guys. It. Guys, check it out, All right, it's on the shirt right there. Florida, iguana, and tortoise breeders. Right. You can find them on Instagram. You can find them on Facebook. I'll tag them on Facebook if you guys uh, are watching on Facebook. Yes. And uh, go out and give them a follow. Yeah, appreciate it. Because Sam's doing, uh, you like to share the facts of how, to, how, you're, how you're living and things you're learning about these tortoises with other people. Right. Very cool. Thank All you. Right. Take care, folks.